Hello! Are you just sitting at home wondering, when could I possibly watch another video about bubbles? Well, today's your lucky day. This is another video about bubbles. And in this video, what I want to look at specifically is how can I, if I have a bubble object like this, bubble one, and I have another bubble object like this, bubble two, how can these objects talk to each other, communicate to each other? How can they ask each other questions like, am I intersecting you? Or you, am I overlapping you? How close are you from me? These types of things. And you can imagine all of the implications and possibilities of this. Now, on the one hand, to do this, all we need to do is figure out some math, right? And that math is, what is the math of two circles that are overlapping versus two circles that aren't overlapping? That math is quite simple in some ways. I just want to look at the distance between the centers of both of those circles, right? And you can see here that that distance is going to tell us whether they're overlapping or not, right? So one way that I could think about it, look at this. If this is R1 and this is R2, right, those are the, this is the radius of this circle, this is the radius of this circle. If this distance, right, that's also, this is R2 right here, and this is R1 right here. If that distance is greater than R1 plus R2, then certainly the circles are not overlapping. However, if that distance is less than the sum of the radii of these two circles, then they are overlapping. So on the one hand, this is all I need to do. I need to be able to say, give me the distance, can you see that? Just barely on the top, of between x1, y1, x2, y2, and then I need some sort of if statement to see is this distance less than R1 plus R2, then they are intersecting. So let's actually go and start to implement that math in the code first. But what I want you to think about is, is there a way for the objects themselves to handle the computation of that math rather than that math just be fiddling about in the code somewhere perhaps less convenient? So come back over here with me and let's actually, let's go over here. And so I have the, uh, I'm continuing from where I left off. This is essentially the same bubble class that's been in my previous videos. Um, and I'm just gonna make two objects. I'm gonna say bubble one and bubble two. The E key on my keyboard doesn't work. It only works about 40% of the time, if you notice me pressing it a bunch of times. So um, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, Bubble one equals a new bubble at uh, uh, 200, 200, I'm gonna put one on the left side of the screen and one on the uh, 300, 200 on the right side of the screen. Then I'm gonna say bubble one dot show and bubble two dot show. So now I should see, ah, and that's bubble one and bubble two. So now when I go to my sketch, I should hit refresh. I don't see any bubbles. Um, let's look here. Uh, bubble one. Oh, look at this. I forgot. The bubble has a R property for its radius, and I did not define that. Ha, here's an interesting thing. As if I'm just coming up with this right now. Uh, one of the features of ES6, which is the version of JavaScript that we're using that allows us to write classes to make objects from, allows us to give a default value to a particular argument if we forget to pass it in. So this a uh, parameter here, r, which is going to be assigned to the bubble object's r property. I can actually say r equals 50 right up here. And then if I refresh it, look, I have two bubble objects. It's even sort of a weird, oh, I meant for this one to be at 400, not that that really matters. Um, so you can see those are two bubble objects. And I could optionally give one of them the, if I don't want to use that default uh, value for r, I could, give, I could give it a value. So this is actually incredibly convenient. Little piece of syntax here that if you're going to have a parameter to a function, and this is not just for the constructor, you can do this for any function, although it's quite convenient to do it with constructor functions, and I wanna give it a default value. So a little tidbit there for you inside this video, which is about the objects intersecting. Okay, so now let's move them around. Bubble1.move, bubble2.move. Let's move them around just to see, okay. So what I want, come on, come on bubbles. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do some work here to get them to, uh, those bubbles to get a little closer to each other. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna go back and let's, oh, you can't, 
really, I, I, did, I did end up going above, but this is fine. You can see that. I'll, I'll be better about this in the future. So I want to try to implement this math. For example, what if I want to say, right here in draw, I can say, all right, uh, I need to find the distance between bubble 1.x, bubble 1.y, right? These are the properties, the x and y of that bubble, and bubble 2.x and bubble 2.y. And then I, oh, and this should say d. And then I want to say if d is less than uh, what? If it's less, oh, no, no. Yeah, if it's less than bubble 1.r plus bubble 2.r, then, and let's put all, I'm going to do something silly here. Let's put all this over here. And I can say uh, bubble 1. Dot, uh, no, no, I'm just going to say like background uh, zero, uh, 200, 0, 100. Okay? So this is the idea of like, ah, now I have the math for intersection. I know I need to find the distance between those two bubble objects. What's the distance between these two bubble objects? If it's less than the sum of their two radius, radii, then. It's intersecting. Okay, so let's run this. You can do it, bubble. Be together, bubbles. Be together. Okay, I'm just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to force it. Uh, let's, let's, let's bring them a little bit closer. Ah, there you go. Now move apart, bubbles. So one thing I could do is I could just assign. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Um, I could just assign like the bubble location to the mouse or something, and that then I could move it, and you would be able to see. But the bubbles, they're going to move apart eventually. Come on, move apart, move apart. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> I think so, you saw the background flicker. Okay, so you get that this works, and uh, there we go. I got to be a little bit more thoughtful about the sort of intersection thing. Now, here's the thing. I don't, I don't like this at all. I don't like this one bit because the idea here is eventually. What if I have three bubbles, or four bubbles, or 10 bubbles, or 100 bubbles? I need some way that I really just want to say, if any given bubble, let's say b1, dot uh, intersects b2, I, I want to be able to write code like this. I want to be able to encapsulate all the idea of this math into a function in the bubble object. So bubbles know, <laughs> bubbles know how to communicate with each other, how to test one bubble's location versus another bubble's location. So if I come back over here, what I mean is I want to say something like if bubble one dot intersects bubble two, then do this. Okay? So this is the idea because then I could start having arrays of things and loops and check every bubble. And, I, and it's just going to be more convenient than having this math sort of out here where it's, it doesn't really need to be. So let's take a look at how we might do this. So what this means to me is I need to write a new function that's part of the bubble class called intersects. So that's pretty easy. I could just do that. Done. That function, by the way, because of the way that I wrote it here inside this if statement, the idea is that function is going to return true or return false. So right now, just to have this do something, I could just say return true right here. And the idea here is that, okay, well, the intersects function is a function that's called on one bubble and receives as an argument another bubble. So I need to give it an argument here, and I can call that other, for example. So now, if I comment out this math, and I run this, right? It looks like it's working, but of course, if I move their locations away, it's always drawing that pinkish background because my function always returns true. <laughs> so one thing you can kind of see from this is it's often worth kind of writing the skeleton of your code and then just like hard coding in true or false and see if it's working as, ah, false, I don't see it. True, I do see it. Now I could actually go and fill in the math in that part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this math that I had before 
and I'm going to bring it down here, and things are going to get a little bit easier. I still want to calculate the distance, but what do I want to calculate it between? I want to calculate it between the bubble that I am right now. What is the bubble that I am right now? This. This bubble with what? The other bubble. The other bubble that you have so generously passed in as an argument to my parameter named other. Other, other. And then if that distance is less than my radius and the other radius, then and only then would I return true. And I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to show you something that's going to make this nicer in a minute because all of, many of you are complaining right now the way I'm writing this. And we can see now, now this bubble class has a function called intersects which can receive any other bubble and always check if the current bubble is intersecting the other bubble. So here we go, I'm going to do this. They're not intersect. Let's, 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 let's hack something to make thing, our life, life a little easier. Instead of moving bubble 2, I'm just going to say bubble 2.x equals mouse x and bubble 2.y equals mouse y. Okay, now of course I could write a function to have it follow the mouse or set the mouse, but I'm just going to throw this in there really quickly so that I can do this and I can woo, intersects doesn't intersect. Okay, so now let's take a look at one thing which I want to change here, which is that I am a weird, strange person, and I really like the way I wrote this. It just says it all. I know I have an if statement, and I know when it's true, I want to return true, and when it's false, I want to return false, and I've said all that, and I said it in like five lines of code here, but the truth of the matter is, this is a statement, distance is less than this.r plus other.r, that whole statement evaluates to true or false. When it evaluates the true, I want to return true. When it evaluates the false, I want to return false. So this can actually be condensed into just, whoops, <laughs> oh, autofill, return the result of this Boolean, right? I could just say, is that return the truth of this statement, true or false? And this will, in fact, be the same exact result. Yay, oh, this is the end of this video. <laughs> So, what have I done here? What might you want to do? Now, here's the thing. Oh, come on. Let me show you one other thing. Let's, a let's ask a question. I'm going to ask a very important question here. If I were to say, if bubble 2 intersects bubble 1, have I changed anything? Program still works. This is exactly the same program. So, in this case, I am writing sort of a function. You could maybe make the argument that you want like a bubble manager class and the bubble manager class has an intersects function that takes two bubbles and you know, I, so there's, th this is the, the point is there's always other ways to organize your code and it, you can, you have to watch out for like over engineering your system. But this is one way of doing it. It's a way that I kind of like to do it. Later you might see in other videos or tutorials that I make where I have, instead of just all bubbles, I have, you know, frogs and turtles and fish and kitty cats and maybe the frogs have to check their location relative to the kitty cats, but the kitty cats have to check their location relative to the turtles. So having the different objects act on different kinds of objects is also something that comes up. But um, what I would say, what I'm going to do in the next video is how do I go from this idea to suddenly having a system of like a hundred bubbles and I'm checking if every single one is intersecting any other one and what happens when we do that. So I am going to do that in the next video. You might actually just give that a try yourself uh, and then see how it goes and watch the next video. Okay, thanks for watching.